just out here. I was fishing. I'm not cold. I'm having fun. I'm gonna catch more fish. Hey, what the heck was that? Oh, hey, Matt, I'm happy I found you. This is uh, what we do up here on cold February days. We come ice fishing, and I figured this was a perfect opportunity to test this. This is the brand new 2022 Yamaha Transporter Lite up and we're gonna put it to the test so in this video I'll tell you what it's like as an ice fishing rig we'll hit the trails with it and then we'll do a top speed run so make sure you stay tuned Let's talk about ice fishing specifically. So what do you really need for ice fishing with a snowmobile? Well, you need something that's gonna be able to go off trail out here on the ice into some deep snow. And then maybe most importantly, you need something that can haul you, maybe a buddy, and all of your stuff. So now let's look at the transporter. Well, it has basically all of those things. First of all, 146 inch track. This is a long track out here in the powder. It feels excellent. And then you get those big float skis. Those are some extra wide skis. Once again, in the deep snow, just helps give you that flotation, that lift, which is excellent. Now, when it comes to cargo, we have a lot of space back here. You get so much extra tunnel. Now, we do have a small Yamaha gear bag. Yamaha is happy to excel, sell you a number of different accessories. Or if you want, you can always just take a ratchet strap or a bungee and just bungee something on. Now, we don't have the optional hitch on our unit today we just tied up but of course a lot of ice fishing guys like having the trailer too you know what so far so good with this Yamaha out here ice fishing it seems to me somebody interested in this transporter is going to be someone with a cottage or ice fishing with a little bit more of a utility or, or work focus just based on the type of machine it is and then of course getting this two up seat well that's extra convenient to be able to haul two people with you um, it's been great out here ice fishing today, but of course that doesn't mean you can't have fun with it on the trail. So we're gonna do some trail riding and I'm gonna tell you all about that. But right now I'm hopping in the hut and we're gonna catch some fish, so see ya. We're off the ice now, back here at my house. We've actually been living with this transporter for two weeks since we went ice fishing, so we have a lot to share with you. First, let's start with the specs. So powering this transporter is a really great blend of old school and new school. This is a 397cc single cylinder, two stroke engine, but it also features fuel injection and liquid cooling. And that means that even though, like I mentioned, it feels like old school tech starting this thing, you don't have to worry about a choke and it still has a pull start on it. And because it's such a small displacement engine, it's so easy to pull over. In fact, you can see me here pulling it over after a night of sitting outside at minus 20. It took four pulls and it started right up. So nice not to have to worry about a choke and making sure that this thing starts up on a cold day. It just does it for you. Up front here, we'll talk about a few things too. First of all, this is a Yamaha accessory. I call it a bush bar because I think it kind of signals what this machine is about, getting off trail and kind of crashing through some stuff. Let me show you the cockpit of the transporter light and it really is dead simple. Right here in front of the rider, you have four switches, high beams, heated handlebars, reverse, yes, you do have reverse here, and a heated thumb grip. That right there is your breakaway tether. There's your rip cord. And of course, this does have electric start as well. And a pretty nice little LCD screen up there giving you all your info. Here, I'll start it up and you can see it. Whoops, kill switch. The 
other thing special here on the transporter light is a set of helper springs. Now, to my eye, they essentially look like leaf springs that you would see in a pickup truck. And you can lower them or raise them, so activate them or not. So the suspension here is adjustable. However, those leaf springs are basically, yes, I want them, or no, I don't. Now, when you have them active, they're going to help to support two riders. And I actually had myself and my brother, who of course are both big dudes, on this sled and it supported us with those helper springs. So that gives you an idea of just the kind of weight that this thing can actually handle. Although a word of caution, when you're riding alone, if you leave those springs up, it becomes almost oversprung in the rear end. And if you do hit something a little too hard, you can have a G out, you can really have the back end lift up on you. And I guess now I might as well tell you that happened to me. And you can see my near miss right here and watch it and then we'll talk about it. Oh, a couple coyotes out in the field. Hey, coyotes. Hey, fellas. One guy's taking off, the other guy's curious. Let's talk about the ride now and what you just saw right there. And first of all, all I went up to it, I came into that field way too hot. It was an unknown. I didn't know how big those whoops were gonna be. I was on top of them before I realized how big they were. So I kind of locked up the brake. But then what happened is when the springs back here are engaged, the helper springs, and you hit really hard in the rear end, rather than bottoming out and having that bottom absorb some of that energy, the springs go right down and then spring right back up. So the back end just jumped right up on me, kind of sent me sideways I was able to kind of steer into it and save it but definitely those helper springs are meant for quite a bit of weight it's at this point in the review I should let you know just in case you didn't uh, these Yamaha models are actually rebadged Arctic cats they're the Arctic cat blast lineup and obviously Yamaha saw the need for sort of a lightweight inexpensive series and that's why they went ahead and borrowed it from Arctic cat that's just something you should know Besides that one little hiccup, overall, I've been having a blast on the trails with this transporter light. Now, last winter, we had the SX Venom. It's the same chassis, same power plant, but without those skis and with a much shorter track. And that sled felt like a little three-quarter sled, a really great learner's snowmobile. Get this transporter light with the longer track, and suddenly, it feels like it's meant for an adult. Now, the size of it is the same. It definitely feels more compact than a full-size snowmobile does but again because the track here you just you don't notice it as much so uh, the, the the venom comes across as being smaller more of a toy the transporter light comes across more serious as a, a really decent snowmobile out there on the trail and listen if you're worried about this thing being slow don't be. Even for me, again, a heavy guy, it's been more than enough. Now, it is the kind of sled where I ride it sort of zero to a hundred, nothing in between, because you can just ring it out all the time, but it has enough power to keep up on the trail, absolutely, and out there in the deep powder, more than enough to get you moving. And now I might as well show you our top speed run. All right, folks, time for a top speed run here on the Transporter Light. Let's see what you can do. It's in miles per hour. So I think the fastest I saw there was 69 miles per hour. Maybe could have got 70 if I had a bit more runway here, but yeah, 70 miles per hour. So I said this earlier, once again, it might be a small little engine, packs a decent punch, is fairly quick, and then top speed, I don't think you can complain about 70 miles an hour. It's pretty nice. Why go for the transporter light then? I think the biggest answer to that question is the price. You could get a two-up machine that was more powerful, probably a little more comfortable out there on the trail, 
But if you go for the transporter here in Canada, you're only going to pay $12,099 in the United States, an even more enticing number at $9,199. So for under 10 grand in the US, you're getting a machine that sure is smaller and less powerful, but it doesn't necessarily feel that way. It feels like a legitimate two up for a couple of adults or especially for an adult rider and someone younger in the back. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this video. Now, my verdict on this transporter light is that it is nice to see brands doing some back to basics things, offering you simple snowmobiles for affordable prices. And that's exactly what we have here. So like I said, that's the end. Please now go below, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this Yamaha or Yamaha if you're in the US. As always, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next.